ASCII art. ASCII art is a graphic design technique that uses computers for presentation and consists of pictures pieced together from the 95 printable, from a total of 128 characters defined by the ASCII standard from 1963 and ASCII compliant character sets with proprietary extended characters, beyond the 128 characters off standard 7 bit ASCII. The term is also loosely used to refer to text based visual art in general. ASCII art can be created with any text editor, and is often used with freeform languages. Most examples of ASCII art require a fixed width font, non proportional fonts, as on a traditional typewriter, such as Courier for presentation. Among the oldest known examples of ASCII art are the creations by computer art pioneer Kenneth Knowlton from around 1966, who was working for Bell Labs at the time. Studies in Perception I by Ken Knowlton and Leon Harmon from 1966 show some examples of their early ASCII art. ASCII art was invented, in large part, because early printers often lacked graphics ability and thus characters were used in place of graphic marks. Also, to mark divisions between different print jobs from different users, bulk printers often used ASCII art to print large banners, making the division easier to spot so that the results could be more easily separated by a computer operator or clerk. ASCII art was also used in early email when images could not be embedded. Since 1867 typewriters have been used for creating visual art. TTY stands for teletype or teletypewriter and is also known as teleprinter or teletype. RTTY stands for radio teletype. Character sets such as BODOT code, which predated ASCII, were used. According to a chapter in the RTTY handbook, text images have been sent via teletypewriter as early as 1923. However, None of the old RTTY art has been discovered yet. What is known as that text images appeared frequently on radio teletype in the 1960s and the 1970s. In the 1960s, Andries Van Dam published a representation of an electronic circuit produced on an IBM 1403 line printer. At the same time, Kenneth Knowlton was producing realistic images, also on line printers, by overprinting several characters on top of one another. Note that it was not ASCII art in the sense that the 1403 was driven by an EBC decoded platform and the character sets and trains available on the 1403 were derived from EBC DIC rather than ASCII, despite some glyphs commonalities. The widespread usage of ASCII art can be traced to the computer bulletin board systems of the late 1970s and early 1980s. The limitations of computers of that time period necessitated the use of text characters to represent images. Along with ASCII's use in communication, however, it also began to appear in the underground online art groups of the period. An ASCII comic is a form of webcomic which uses ASCII text to create images. In place of images in a regular comic, ASCII art is used, with the text or dialogue usually placed underneath. During the 1990s, graphical browsing and variable width fonts became increasingly popular, leading to a decline in ASCII art. Despite this, ASCII art continued to survive through Online MUDs, an acronym for Multi-User Dungeon, which are textual multiplayer role-playing video games, internet relay chat, email, message boards and other forms of online communication which commonly employ the needed fixed width. ASCII and more importantly, NC were staples of the early technological era. Terminal systems relied on coherent presentation using color and control signals standard in the terminal protocols. Over the years, Wares groups began to enter the ASCII art scene. Wares groups usually release info files with their software, cracks or other general software reverse engineering releases. The ASCII art will usually include the Wares group's name and maybe some ASCII borders on the outsides of the release notes, etc. BBS systems were based on ASCII and ANSI art, as were most DOS and similar console applications, and the precursor to AOL. ASCII art is used wherever text can be more readily printed or transmitted than graphics, or in some cases, where the transmission of pictures is not possible. This includes typewriters, teleprinters, non graphic computer terminals, printer separators, in early computer networking, for example, BBC, email, and Usenet news messages. ASCII art is also used within the source code of computer programs for representation of company or product logos, and flow control or other diagrams. In some cases, the entire source code of a program is a piece of ASCII art, for instance, an entry to one of the earlier international obfuscated C code contest is a program that adds numbers, but visually looks like a binary adder drawn in logic ports. 
Some electronic schematic archives represent the circuits using ASCII art. Examples of ASCII-style art predating the modern computer era can be found in the June 1939, July 1948 and October 1948 editions of Popular Mechanics. Zero Overkill is a 2D platform multiplayer shooter game designed entirely in color ASCII art. Player and VLC media player can display videos as ASCII art through the Lib library. ASCII art is used in the making of DOS-based ZZT games. Many game walkthrough guides come as part of a basic text file. This file often contains the name of the game in ASCII art. Such as below, word art is created using backslashes and other ASCII values in order to create the illusion of 3D. Different techniques could be used in ASCII art to obtain different artistic effects. Electronic circuits and diagrams were implemented by typewriter or teletype and provided the pretense for ASCII. Typewriter style lettering, made from individual letter characters line art, for creating shapes. Solid art, for creating filled objects. Shading, using symbols with various intensities for creating gradients or contrasts. Combinations of the above, often used as signatures, for example, at the end of an email. As pixel characters, use combinations of, and to make pictures br. The simplest forms of ASCII art are combinations of two or three characters for expressing emotion in text. They are commonly referred to as emoticon, smiley, or smiley. There is another type of one-line ASCII art that does not require the mental rotation of pictures, which is widely known in Japan as keimoji, literally face characters. Traditionally, they are referred to as ASCII face. More complex examples use several lines of text to draw large symbols or more complex figures. Hundreds of different text smileys were developed over time, but only a few were generally accepted, used and understood. An ASCII comic is a form of webcomic. The Adventures of Nerd Boy, or just Nerd Boy is an ASCII comic by Joaquin Gondara between August 5, 2001 and July 17, 2007 consisting of 600 strips. They were posted to ASCII Art News Group Alt.ASCII Art and on the website. Some strips have been translated to Polish and French. The Atari 400-800 which were released in 1979 did not follow the ASCII standard and had its own character set, called the TASCII. The emergence of a TASCII art coincided with the growing popularity of BBS systems caused by availability of the acoustic couplers that were compatible with the 8-bit home computers. Atasky text animations are also referred to as break animations by the Atari seniors. The Commodore 64, which was released in 1982, also did not follow the ASCII standard. The C64 character set is called Petsky, an extended form of ASCII 1963. As with the Atari's Atasky art, C64 fans developed a similar scene that used Petsky for their creations. So-called block ASCII or high ASCII uses the extended characters of the 8-bit code page 437, which is a proprietary standard introduced by IBM in 1979 ANSI standard X3.16, for the IBM PC DOS and MS-DOS operating systems. Block ASCIIs were widely used on the PC during the 1990s until the Internet replaced PCs as the main communication platform. Until then, block ASCIIs dominated the PC text art scene. The first art scene group that focused on the extended character set of the PC in their artwork was called Aces of ANSI Art, or AAA. Some members left in 1990, and formed a group called ACID, ANSI Creators in Demand. In that same year the second major underground art scene group was founded, ICE, Insane Creators Enterprise. There is some debate between ASCII and Block ASCII artist, with hardcore ASCII artists maintaining that Block ASCII art is in fact not ANSI art because it does not use the 128 characters of the original ASCII standard. On the other hand, block ASCII artists argue that if their art uses only characters off computer's character set, then it is to be called ASCII, regardless if the character set is proprietary or not. Microsoft Windows does not support the ANSI standard X3.16. One can view block ASCIIs with a text editor using the font terminal, but it will not look exactly as it was intended by the artist. With a special ASCII slash ANSI viewer, such as ACID View for Windows, see ASCII and ANSI art viewers, one can see block ASCII and ANSI files properly. An example that illustrates the difference in appearance is part of this article. Alternatively, one could look at the file using the type command in the command prompt. 
In the art scene one popular ASCII style that used the 7-bit standard ASCII character set was the so-called old-school style. It is also called Amiga style, due to its origin and widespread use on the Commodore Amiga computers. The style uses primarily the characters, underscore slash backslash plus equals. The old school art looks more like the outline drawings of shapes than real pictures. This is an example of Amiga style, also referred to as old school or old school style, scene ASCII art. The Amiga ASCII scene surfaced in 1992, seven years after the introduction of the Commodore Amiga 1000. The Commodore 64 Pepsky scene did not make its transition to the Commodore Amiga as the C64 demo and where scenes did. Among the first Amiga ASCII art groups were Art, Epsilon Design, Upper Class, Unreal, later known as Design. This means that the text art scene on the Amiga was actually younger than the text art scene on the PC. The Amiga artists also did not call their ASCII art style old school. That term was introduced on the PC. When and by whom is unknown and lost in history. The Amiga style ASCII artwork was most often released in the form of a single text file, which included all the artwork usually requested, with some design parts in between, as opposed to the PC art scene where the artwork was released as a zip archive with separate text files for each piece. Furthermore, the releases were usually called ASCII collections and not art packs like on the IBM PC. This kind of ASCII art is handmade in a text editor. Popular editors used to make this kind of ASCII art include Cygnus Editor aka said, Amiga, and Edit Plus 2, PC. Old school font example from the PC, which was taken from the ASCII editor F. Eaglet. New school is a popular form of ASCII art which capitalizes on character strings like dollar hashtag XO. In spite of its name, the style is not new, on the contrary, it was very old but fell out of favor and was replaced by old school and block style ASCII art. It was dubbed new school upon its comeback and renewed popularity at the end of the 1990s. New School changed significantly as the result of the introduction of extended proprietary characters. The classic 7-bit standard ASCII characters remain predominant, but the extended characters are often used for fine-tuning and tweaking. The style developed further after the introduction and adaptation of Unicode. While some preferred to use a simple text editor to produce ASCII art, specialized programs, such as Hoffa have been developed that often simulate the feature sand tools in bitmap image editors. For block ASCII art and ANSI art the artist almost always uses a special text editor, because to generate the required characters in a standard keyboard, one needs to know the alt code for each character. For example alt plus 178 will produce, alt plus 177 will produce and, alt plus 8 will produce. The special text editors have sets of special characters assigned to existing keys on the keyboard. Popular MS-DOS based editors such as the draw and acid draw had multiple sets of different special characters mapped to the F keys to make the use of those characters easier for the artist who can switch between individual sets of characters via basic keyboard shortcuts. Poplo Draw is one of the very few special ASCII slash ANSI art editors that were developed for MS Windows XP. Other programs allow one to automatically convert an image to text characters, which is a special case of vector quantization. A method is to sample the image down to grayscale with less than 8 bit precision, and then assign a character for each value. Such ASCII art generators often allow users to choose the intensity and contrast of the generated image. Three factors limit the fidelity of the conversion, especially of photographs. Examples of converted images are given below. This is one of the earliest forms of ASCII art, dating back to the early days of the 1960s mini computers and teletypes. During the 1970s, it was popular in U.S. malls to get a t shirt with a photograph printed in ASCII art on it from an automated kiosk manned by a computer, and London Science Museum had a similar service to produce printed portraits. With the advent of the web, HTML, and CSS, many ASCII conversion programs will now quantize to a full RGB color space enabling colorized ASCII images. Still images or movies can also be converted to ASCII on various Unix and Unix-like systems using the Olib, black and white, or LibCACA, color, graphics device driver, or the VLC media player or MPV under Windows, Linux or Mac OS, all of which render the screen using ASCII symbols instead of pixels. See also O'Reilly article watch videos in ASCII art. There are also a number of smartphone applications, such as ASCII Cam for Android, 
that generate ASCII art in real time using input from the phone's camera. These applications typically allow the ASCII art to be saved as either a text file or as an image made up of ASCII text. Most ASCII art is created using a monospaced font, where all characters are identical in width. Courier is a popular monospaced font. Early computers in use when ASCII art came into vogue had monospaced fonts for screen and printer displays. Today most of the more commonly used font sign word processors, web browsers and other programs are proportional fonts, such as Helvetica or Times Roman, where different widths are used for different characters. ASCII art drawn for a fixed width font will usually appear distorted, or even unrecognizable when displayed in a proportional font. Some ASCII artists have produced art for display in proportional fonts. These ASCIIs, rather than using a purely shade-based correspondence, use characters for slopes and borders and use block shading. These ASCIIs generally offer greater precision and attention to detail than fixed width ASCIIs for a lower character count, although they are not as universally accessible since they are usually relatively font-specific. Animated ASCII art started in 1970 from so-called VT100 animations produced on VT100 terminals. These animations were simply text with cursor movement instructions, deleting and erasing the characters necessary to appear animated. Usually, they represented a long handcrafted process undertaken by a single person to tell a story. Contemporary web browser revitalized animated ASCII art again. It became possible to display animated ASCII art via JavaScript or Java applets. Static ASCII art pictures are loaded and displayed one after another, creating the animation very similar to how movie projectors on real film reel and project individual pictures on the big screen at movie theaters. A new term was born, Ascimation, another name of animated ASCII art. A seminal work in this arena is the Star Wars Ascimation. More complicated routines in JavaScript generate more elaborate Ascimations showing effects like morphing effects, star field emulations, fading effects and calculated images, such as Mandelbrot fractal animations. There are now many tools and programs that can transform raster images into text symbols. Some of these tools can operate on streaming video. For example, the music video for American singer Beck's song Black Tambourine is made up entirely of ASCII characters that approximate the original footage. VLC, a media player software, can render any video in colored ASCII through the LibCACA module. There are a variety of other types of art using text symbols from character sets other than ASCII and or some form of color coding. Despite not being pure ASCII, these are still often referred to as ASCII art. The character set portion designed specifically for drawing is known as the Lena drawing characters or pseudographics. The IBM PC graphics hardware in text mode uses 16 bits per character. It supports a variety of configurations. But in its default mode under DOS they are used to give 256 glyphs from one of the IBM PC code pages, code page 437 by default, 16 foreground colors, 8 background colors, and a flash option. Such art can be loaded into screen memory directly. ANSI.sys, if loaded, also allows such art to be placed on screen by outputting escape sequences that indicate movements of the screen cursor and color slash flash changes. If this method is used then the art becomes known as ANSI art. The IBM PC code pages also include characters intended for simple drawing which often made this art appear much cleaner than that made with more traditional character sets. Plain text files are also seen with these characters, though they have become far less common since Windows GUI text editors, using the Windows ANSI code page, have largely replaced DOS-based ones. In Japan, ASCII art, AA, is mainly known as Shift-JIS art. Shift-JIS offers a larger selection of characters than plain ASCII, including characters from Japanese scripts and full-width forms of ASCII characters, and may be used for text-based art on Japanese websites. Often, such artwork is designed to be viewed with the default Japanese font on a platform, such as the proportional MSP Gothic. Users on ASCII.net, in which the word ASCII refers to the ASCII Corporation rather than the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, popularized a style of in which the face appears upright rather than rotated. Unicode would seem to offer the ultimate flexibility in producing text-based art with its huge variety of characters. However, finding a suitable fixed-width font is likely to be difficult if a significant subset of Unicode is desired. Modern Unix-style operating systems do provide complete fixed-width Unicode fonts, for example for his term. Windows has the Courier new font which includes characters like, heart, smiley face, also, 
the common practice of rendering Unicode with a mixture of variable width fonts is likely to make predictable display hard if more than a tiny subset of Unicode is used. As an adequate representation of a cat's face in a font with varying character widths. The combining characters mechanism of Unicode provides considerable ways of customizing the style, even obfuscating the text, for example via an online generator like Obfuscator, which focuses on the filters. Glitcher is one example of Unicode art. Initiated in 2012, these symbols, intruding up and down, are made by combining lots of diacritical marks. It's a kind of art. There's quite a lot of artists who use the internet or specific social networks as their canvas. The corresponding creations are favored in web browsers, thanks to their always better support, as geekly stylized usernames for social networks. With a fair compatibility, and among different online tools, Facebook symbols showcases various types of Unicode art, mainly for aesthetic purpose. KIPEDIA Wikipedia 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 etc. Besides, the creations can be handcrafted, by programming, or pasted from mobile applications, for example the category of fancy text tools on Android. The underlying technique dates back to the old systems that incorporated control characters, though. For example the German composite Codice underscore 1 would be imitated on ZX Spectrum by overriding Codice underscore 2 after backspace and Codice underscore 3. CF. Below. In the 1970s and early 1980s it was popular to produce a kind of text art that relied on overprinting. This could be produced either on a screen or on a printer be typing a character, backing up, and then typing another character, just as on a typewriter. This developed into sophisticated graphics in some cases, such as the Play-Doh system, circa 1973, where superscript and subscript allowed a wide variety of graphic effects. A common use were for emoticons, with Wobtax and Victory both producing convincing smiley faces. Overprinting had previously been used on typewriters, but the low-resolution pixelation of characters on video terminals meant that overprinting here produced seamless pixel graphics, rather than visibly overstruck combinations of letters on paper. Beyond pixel graphics, this was also used for printing photographs, as the overall darkness of a particular character space dependent on how many characters, as well as the choice of character, were printed in a particular place. Thanks to the increased granularity of tone, photographs were often converted to this type of printout. Even manual typewriters or daisy wheel printers could be used. The technique has fallen from popularity since all cheap printers can easily print photographs, and a normal text file, or an email message or Usenet posting, cannot represent overprinted text. However, something similar has emerged to replace it shaded or colored ASCII art, using ANSI video terminal markup or color codes, such as those found in HAIL, IRC, and many internet message boards, to add a bit more tone variation. In this way, it is possible to create ASCII art where the characters only differ in color. ASCII art text editors are used to create ASCII art from scratch, or to edit existing ASCII art files. ASCII art may be created from an existing digital image using an ASCII art converter, an online tool or a software application that automatically converts an image into ASCII art, using vector quantization. Typically, this is done by sampling the image down to grayscale with less than 8-bit precision so that each value corresponds to different ASCII character. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.